And then once I got the diagnosis, I started very intentionally adding in all the anti-cancer foods that I was reading about. So I had always been eating things like cruciferous veggies, which are a very powerful anti-cancer food group. But I was like, now I'm like, I'm going to overdose on this stuff. Like, And I just remember like making, and I still do this actually. So I, I would make like avocado toast, which, you know, I'd been eating all along, but then I would just like pile on the sprouts and then sprinkle on the turmeric, which is a high um, anti-cancer compound in there called uh, curcumin. I would chop up like raw broccoli, raw garlic, like every single anti-cancer food I could that I read about, it was going into my diet. I was um, brewing hibiscus tea, which is really high antioxidant. I was eating all the dark red berries, you know, every the mushrooms, like everything. I started taking like a mushroom supplement, like a, an immunity mushroom supplement. Um, and I was like, like I said, ODing on this stuff. I would make these like massive smoothies every day um, using Chris Work's book as a very strong guiding principle in my diet changes. And um, I actually felt great. I was like, I felt the best I had ever had, I think, ironically. Um, my energy was fantastic. I felt like in control. I felt vibrant and, um, you know, it just it was just very bizarre because, you know, this was all during like a very difficult time in my life when COVID was out of control. We were all in like deep quarantine at that point. And I wasn't even thinking about COVID. I was just thinking about this and um, so laser focused on it. So yeah, my diet changed in that way. And I I would say like most of it carried over. I still do most of that stuff because I'm still technically not out of the woods. I have um, five years where I'm considered, you know, to be still like in watch. They're, they're keeping tabs on me every six months. Um so I'm still very much in anti-cancer mode. And honestly, I feel like I'll live this way the rest of my life because I just felt like this came out of nowhere. It could come out of nowhere again. And I'm going to like fight like hell to make sure that doesn't happen again. All right. Well, in phase three, we'll call it. You named a bunch of foods there. You started adding in that are anti-cancer. The cruciferous veggies. You mentioned garlic. I know that's one of your anti-cancer uh, foods that you've added in. Let's let's really dig in and, and list off and, and re-highlight some of the ones you've gone over and then any other additions that you brought in at that time. Sure. So the cruciferous veggies, um, for anyone who's not familiar, that's, you know, kale, arugula, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, watercress, mustard grains, like all those like really like hearty, crunchy, chewy veggies. That's the cruciferous vegetable group. Um, the health benefits of those foods in general are outstanding. You know, there's really not one bad thing to say about them. And when you read about their cancer fighting potential, they're really miraculous. Um, so those foods, uh, dark leafy greens in general. So some that are not uh, cruciferous veggies specifically that I was eating are um, Swiss chard, spinach, um, romaine lettuce, like things like that. Just like any dark leafies I was getting in there. Dark berries are one of Dr. Gregor's, um, he's the author of How Not to Die, one of his power foods, you know, his work um, on nutrition really highlights doc dark berries a lot. So um, I was getting them in my diet every day, uh, in my smoothies specifically, I would just do frozen wild blueberries, which you can get at most supermarkets and at Costco. Um, and then even though I wasn't eating the whole berry, he recommends something called amla powder. Um, so amla is... Indian gooseberry, very difficult to find fresh. Um, I think you might be able to find it frozen at some, you know, Indian supermarkets. But from what I hear, it's not the most palatable berry. But it is sold in powdered form, which is apparently just as good from an antioxidant perspective as the whole berry. So I just ordered a bag of that from Amazon. And you actually don't need a lot. I think it's like half a teaspoon. And it's got like I can't remember. It's like tenfold, if not like more than that, um, the number of antioxidants that you would find in a wild blueberry, which is in and of itself like a very powerful antioxidant food. So I would be adding in the omelet powder. Um, turmeric, which I mentioned, contains something called curcumin, which is actually being studied in clinical trials as a powerful anti-cancer and cancer-fighting food. Um we don't hear more about it because there's no money in food. You know, there's no, <laughs> you can't market a spice or a vegetable and and make a lot of money off of it. So unfortunately, a lot of people don't know about it. But 
when you start researching the power of curcumin, it's like, why is this not being shouted from the rooftops? It is so accessible. You know, turmeric is sold in pretty much every single supermarket across the country, widely popular in other areas of the country. Um, it's in most curry powder. So, you know, you can spice it up with lots of different things or just add it into your food as is. It's sold in powdered form. You can find it in whole form at a lot of them, you know, Whole Foods type stores or, um, like I said, Indian grocery stores, Asian grocery stores usually have it even cheaper in whole root form. So I would buy that. I would just stick the whole thing in the freezer, like untouched. And then when I was ready to use it, I would just pull out one single root and wash it and throw it in the blender or I would peel it and grate it into like rice or beans or whatever it is I was having that night. Um, mushrooms, super powerful cancer fighting food. I love mushrooms. I've always been a mushroom person. So, you know, putting that on a lot of a lot of my food. And like I said, I started taking like a mushroom uh, capsule. Um, this man, Paul Stamets, studies mushrooms in mycology and just their incredible healing powers. Um, and so he developed a line of mushroom supplements that I started taking every day. Um, I also was warding off COVID at that time. So maybe that helped with that too. Um, and then let's see, I said hibiscus is a, a very high antioxidant food. So I would make that into an iced tea. So even when I wasn't eating, I was still getting in my antioxidants. Um, and all these things help your body's immunity and help your body's potential for warding off disease and healing from disease. Um, let's see, what else did I have? Um, garlic, like you said, raw garlic, um, excellent for immunity. It's also antiviral, antibacterial. So, you know, really good in general during COVID. Um, and those were, oh, broccoli sprouts is part of the cruciferous veggie family. So the broccoli sprouts contain a compound called sul sulforaphane, which is a major anti-cancer compounds. And um, I learned how to sprout broccoli sprouts just by Googling. I found a tutorial online by Wellness Mama and um, learned how to sprout my own sprouts. And I've been eating them ever since. I happen to just really love them, but I do like a big handful of them on my lunch. And, you know, all these things together, I think, had a major, major impact on my diet and my general wellness. And you mentioned that mushroom supplement there a couple of times. The amla is a powder, so I guess that could be kind of considered a supplement too. And I believe the turmeric was a supplement. But any other supplements, and I think you add the turmeric in as, as a food on top of that yes. as well. Mm -hmm. But any other supplements that got added in once you're diagnosed? Yeah. So the turmeric, like you said, I did the powder form and the, um, the root form, but I also had a curcumin supplement that... Um, a family member of mine was taking for something else and she had a great success on it. And so I started taking the same one as her. And I actually, I think I doubled or tripled what they recommend on the package because she was taking a lot as well for her specific condition. She also um, has a blood condition. So I was taking the curcumin supplement, the mushroom supplement, um, just a regular uh, multivitamin. I take complement, which is meant to complement an already healthy diet. So it's things that vegans might otherwise have a hard time getting like B12 and D3, things like that. Um, yeah, just taking a lot of vitamin C. So I was getting it in a lot through my diet, but also making sure that, you know, I was supplementing with it as well. Um, not over supplementing, just like, you know, whatever's recommended on the package. And then vitamin D as well. Uh, vitamin D is related to immunity. And I was just really trying to bolster my immune system, like first to first and foremost to fight off cancer cells, but also because the last thing I needed at that point was to get COVID. And this was while we were all in a very heightened state of fear and awareness about COVID. So, and I was being forced to go to the hospital and have blood tests and, you know, just some invasive procedures where I was uncomfortable with how close I had to be to medical staff. Um, so I really wanted to make sure that I was building up my immunity in that regard too. So the vitamin D helped with that as well. It's obvious hearing you talk that you had a lot of guidance from doing reading on your own and different health influencers, but did you get any guidance from like a naturopathic doctor or a functional medicine doctor, anybody more in the alternative realm that went along with the conventional doctors you're working with? Once I felt a little safer, because like I said, I was really not happy with the fact that it was being forced into doctor's offices during this time where everyone else was staying home. Um, and I felt it was just kind of ironic that like I had to go 
out when I was feeling very vulnerable. Um, so once things died down a little bit, um, of course, it was nowhere near the end of COVID, but probably like maybe that fall, um, I called a naturopath who I had seen before um, for something totally unrelated and liked him and, you know, told him about my diagnosis. And he he actually didn't really give me any specific dietary advice, but we identified stress as being a big problem in my life. Um, so he gave me acupuncture for the stress. Um, and then I just, I, I can't remember what specifically, I think I told him like the diet that I was eating and he was very supportive of that. Um, but, you know, wanted me to manage, you know, my mental state and that to him was a key component and a missing piece. Um, so I had acupuncture, uh, several times, but beyond that, um, nothing with him specifically, uh, about, you know, no extra supplementation or dietary change. Um, and then on my own accord, I went to a Reiki healer. Uh, I had never done energy healing before. I was kind of like, you know, I can't believe I'm doing this. But I had read in Radical Remission, one of the books I read when I was first diagnosed, that some people claim that their cancer was due to an energy blockage. And so at this point, I was like, why the hell not? You know, we're going to throw everything at this because like I never want to look back and be like, oh, I didn't try that. Maybe I should have. So I actually had some energy healing done. I have no idea if it made a difference or not. Um, I, I just had one session. Um, I did infrared sauna a few times during this time uh, because it's known for de detoxification. And again, I was just trying to clean out my system. Like I said, throwing everything at it that I possibly could. You mentioned the supplement there, specifically taking Paul Stamets mushroom caps. Do you know specifically what was in those? Because I know he has a bunch of different blends and some of them are tincture form, some are capsules. I know it's a really reputable brand and his information is incredible, but I'm just curious specifics on on what you took there. Um, I would have to look it up. It's a number of different mushrooms. I know one of them is <laughs> Cordyceps, which is getting some bad press right now in The Last of Us, the HBO show. <laughs> but um, it's actually an incredible mushroom with a lot of healing potential. Um, so I know that that's one of the mushrooms and... Um, off the top of my head, I can't remember. I would have to look it up. But if you look up the, I think it's called My Community Blend, I want to say. Um, and it, it lists all the mushrooms that that are in that blend. So one of the blends. Okay. And yeah. it was a capsule? Yes. It was a, a capsule. And I believe you are supposed to take two a day. And um, if you'd like, I can look it up after we chat and you can put it in the show notes. But um, yeah, it's it's one of his like standard immune, um, immunity formulas. All right. Yeah, we'll add it later. And part of the reason I wanted to jump into that is quality is something we haven't discussed yet. And I know his supplements are of the highest quality. Talk about food quality and supplement quality before and after diagnosis. So, you know, there's organic food and and you're not having meat. So, you know, you're not into the grass fed or wild meats. We don't have to go there. But when it comes to supplements and produce, was organic and non-GMO a concern pre-diagnosis, post-diagnosis, or is that not something you factor in? I was pretty conscious of it before diagnosis. You know, I'm someone who like loves to read about this stuff. Um, there's a reason why I do what I do. I just, you know, really love hearing about food and how it's produced and its impact on not only our bodies, but the environment. You know, I'm deeply connected to and committed to our planet. And, um, you know, when I'm, when I read about the impact of pesticides, um, on the planet, it's very disheartening. It's very frustrating. And then certain things that are sprayed on plants are actually directly linked to my specific kind of cancer. So Roundup exposure is linked to my cancer. Um, so something that I cared about before, you know, I just doubled down on it. So, Food is an investment, especially healthy food and organic food. I know that organic food is, you know, not available to everybody. And for some people, it's out of the question with their budget. Um, so I would just recommend looking at the dirty dozen and trying to make the room in your budget for those foods. Um, and if you can afford to get organic otherwise, I do feel like it's worthwhile. Um, you know, we just the science is just emerging on the impact of, you know, GMOs and its impact on our health and well-being. And I feel like your health is 
all you have. You know, if, if you lose your health, like you can't do anything else. So I feel like it's such a worthwhile investment to pay the extra money if you can for the non-GMO and organic foods. So yes, I do try to eat mostly organic. Of course, non-organic food gets in there here and there, especially when I go out. I try to prioritize it without getting psychotic about it. Right. And coming, sticking on this food quality piece a little bit here too, have you made going to farmer's markets more of a priority, getting more local produce, organic when you can there? And you mentioned uh, the broccoli sprouts, so you're now doing those. Do you grow any of your own food? Did you do that before or did you start to grow, you know, gardening and getting into that to have more control of your food? Yeah, so... My husband, who, you know, you're going to make me get emotional again, he he was such an angel. He is such an angel. But during that time, he started making all these like microgreens for me and growing all these dark leafy greens in our garden because I was eating them with such abundance. And we were trying to avoid going to the supermarket more than we had to because of COVID. And so he started a gorgeous garden for us in the backyard and um he handles it completely on his own. So I wish I could help him out, but I'm kind of strapped for time. So that's his baby. And um, he does such a beautiful job. Um, we grow mostly dark leafy greens, but we also have tomatoes and peppers and squash and cucumbers and herbs. And um, we actually have a few fruit trees that are starting to produce more and more. So we do grow a lot of food. I, you know, we definitely don't grow all of our own food. And then anything beyond that, um, during the colder months, I shop at conventional supermarkets. Um, and then during the summer months, I do some shopping at conventional supermarkets, but I try to buy a lot of produce from farmer's markets. So we're lucky that we live in an area with a lot of farms. So we have a bunch of farmer's markets available to us. And actually only like 15 minutes from my house, there is this farm called um, Ethos Farm Project. And it's actually helmed by a doctor who I've since started to see as a patient, um, Dr. Ron Weiss. He does lifestyle medicine. He's a board certified uh, lifestyle medicine doctor. And his mission is incredible. You know, he believes very much in um, healing through food and combating and preventing and treating illness through diet and lifestyle. And he has this incredible farm that has grown so much since I've moved to the area. And he practices all regenerative organic techniques. The food is absolutely beautiful. You can see and taste the difference in the food. And so um, my family, we actually go every single weekend when the farm stand is open. And it's become like a little family tradition for us. And we've gotten to know the farmers there. And, you know, you can see, you know, all of their equipment and um, greenhouses and everything. And they're happy to take you for a tour. And it's a beautiful place. And you could just like, I don't know, it feels like walking into nature's pharmacy. And um I'm very passionate about going there because I just feel like that was a big part of my healing journey as well. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. And they did find an aggressive lymphoma. Every single anti-cancer food I could, that I read about, it was going into my diet. So if something means enough to you, you have to make up your mind to make it happen. even if.